Hi guys, I'm Andy Murray from WhatCulture.com. And I'm Adam Wilborn from WhatCulture.com. We are here with your afternoon news. Hashtag good afternoons. And coming out this afternoon, we have news on four new trademarks. Four filed by WWE. And worrying news for WWE ahead of their shows at Madison Square Garden this week. This is the After News. And we are going to start things off with a little rundown of the Red Hot Scandal currently engulfing Revolution Pro Wrestling. Rev Pro, so if you don't know, Revolution Pro is one of the biggest indie groups here in the UK. Um, at the very much at the forefront along with Progress and other groups, uh, ICW, OTT, oh well, that's Irish obviously, I know that. Um, they had a rather unfortunate situation unfold at their Summer Sizzler, one of their signature events in York Hall, London last week. Basically, I've just kind of written down like a blow-by-blow -blow account of what's happened here, but basically what it boils down to is that two wrestlers allegedly shot on a poor referee after a botched finish in a match. So the match was Aussie Open, Cal Fletcher and Mark Davis, versus Sha Samuels and Josh Bodum, two heels. Uh, there was some kind of screwy finish in which the referee counted a free, but the guy was supposed to kick out and the match was supposed to go on. What happened after that was that the heels decided to do an impromptu, unplanned attack on the referee. This began with Samuels doing a scoop slam on the referee whose name is Aaron Wilde. They were very frustrated. At bottom, there's a video of this doing the rounds online. We might be able to show this right here actually. Bodum took things a step further on the outside and laid into him with strikes, kind of battered him uh, just outside the ring. Really kind of a troubling scene given that the referee didn't know about this didn't consent to it or anything like that. It's kind of uncalled for. Well, it's really uncalled for. Now, this got worse. One week later, Wilde, the referee, tweeted saying that it was unplanned. It was a lot more serious than he thought. It had led to injuries so severe that he couldn't referee anymore and he can't remember anything that happened after Samuel's scoop slam. So that's very, very bad, but it gets worse. So bottom. Bodum, however you pronounce it, if you don't know him, he's already quite a controversial figure in British wrestling. He Basically, the only place he gets work is Rev Pro. He works some other smaller groups, but the only notable place is Rev Pro. No one else will book him. Progress blacklisted him ages ago. Last year, he was thrown off an All Japan tour after some like four days uh, for bad behavior. The guy is a lightning rod, and he made an absolute tit of it on social media in the aftermath. He tweeted this big victim blaming post that I've got here uh, where he says blah blah blah. He checked on him backstage and all this other stuff. Basically saying that the, the referee should have, you know, like he shot on him or something. It's all nonsense, it's all kind of covering his own ass. Then later he posts another thing to his Instagram story kind of throwing promoter Andy Quilden of RevPro under the bus uh, saying uh, someone asked him, have you been fired from Rev Pro? And he replied saying, no bro, I quit pro wrestling. Um, Quilden has a text allegedly sent to him saying, I've got your back. Presumably this was before the severity of the situation was known, not to throw Quilden under the bus ourselves. Um, he then deleted his Twitter as the, comp as the controversy intensified and he posted something to Facebook just this morning, a picture of him in the ring with 2011 to 2019, suggesting that he's probably retired. Now. There's more, believe it or not, Shah Samuels, veteran of the British indie scene, something like 17 years in the game, very respected, tweeted a pretty decent apology this morning, uh, or last night, sorry, long, lots of threads. He posted a video that shows that when he did the scoop slam, he shouldn't have done it, he admits that, he owns that, but when he did the scoop slam, he does show that it's not really a slam, he kind of puts him down really gently, he is quite soft with it. But at the same time, he does say, I guess I was getting too comfortable with the way things used to be, Come on, man, don't put qualifiers in. Just own the goddamn thing with no qualifiers. Don't be a little cabbage. Uh, Rev Pro have also issued a statement, and I'm well aware this is dragging on a bit. Rev Pro have said uh, a long, long statement, but the highlights, don't, they don't condone Samuel's actions, but believe his version of the events, that he made a horrible error of judgment. He will undertake an internal disciplinary and uh, zero tolerance on any future incidents. Bodum, meanwhile, his actions don't match up with his recollections of the event. They had no option but to indefinitely sever ties with him. So, Rev Pro there doing the right thing. Bodum being a bell end. Samuels trying to own it at least. Poor old Aaron Wildfo, this guy's young. 500 matches, one mistake, now he can never do it again. Sucks. It really is bad, this. I've seen some people commenting on it on the video on Twitter and stuff saying, oh, they look, they look pretty worked strikes, but by the by all these reports coming out, it doesn't look like that. Yeah, the that's the thing. It doesn't matter if the work strikes. It honestly, it doesn't matter at all if they're he held back or anything like that. 
But going by the referee's account, going by ref pro statement, they've injured a guy and he can no longer work and it was unplanned. It's dis it's just disgusting. Really. Yeah, really interesting to know your thoughts on this. Let us know in the comment <coughs> section below and we'll keep you posted on any developments with this as and when we get it. Let's move on. Next up this afternoon, we are going to be talking about WWE shows at Madison Square Garden. Of course, Raw and SmackDown Live this week are coming from WWE Spiritual Home. But neither of the shows, despite the fact they've got Stone Cold Steve Austin on the show tonight, but as you can see, neither of those shows have sold out and by the looks of SmackDown, aren't even close. That's despite the fact, of course, they've added Stone Cold Steve Austin to Monday Night Raw for that contract signing between Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman. Uh, a worrying sign for WWE, this. It's not great, is it? This is, uh, as you mentioned, their spiritual home. It's one of the most historic venues, not just in wrestling history, but in all of entertainment, really. Um, it's a traditionally strong territory for Vince McMahon and Vince McMahon Sr. going on before that. And yeah, here they are. They can't sell out even with Stone Cold on Monday and the Bloody Undertaker on Tuesday. The SmackDown map is particularly damning. There's blue dots all over the place. Um, we reported on this a month and a half ago or whatever, and obviously we thought for between now and then that at least Raw would sell out, and it might still. You know, there's still several hours to go before the show kicks on. But yeah, I mean, Vince McMahon will consider this a big embarrassment. Especially considering, I mean, we were in New York City just a few months ago. You went to see a show in Madison Square Garden that was sold out and wasn't done by WWE. G1 Supercard, which sold out in one hour, under an hour, like really quickly. It might have been 15 minutes. Um, and obviously that was a first time ever event for them and like a one-off in slightly different circumstances. Mm, yeah. But it's still WWE. This is supposed to be Titan Goliath the biggest thing in the game, and they are the biggest thing in the game, now they can't even sell out their own home turf. It's kind of sad, really. It's intriguing as well because, you know, WWE have tried to prevent AEW getting involved in Madison Square Garden. Uh, and on the Raw preview, uh, which I recorded earlier on with the Daddy Boys, which should be out very soon if it's not already on the What Culture Wrestling channel, um, they pointed, uh, Michael Hamflet pointed out that it does make a lot of sense, not only because of iffy booking, let's just say, in recent memory when it comes to WWE, but also the last time you went to see a show, if you were in, in, in and around that town, you got your fingers burnt. The Raw after yeah. WrestleMania was good, 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 fell off a cliff, was terrible. Yeah, it was. It became one of those shows that by the end was so bad, it was good with the bar and all that garbage. Yeah, it's really just a bigger part or one of the most damning parts so far, actually, of WWE's live event business declining, because they'll, look, they'll probably find a way to fill that Raw building. They'll hand out comps and yeah. stuff. They will get it filled. They normally comp like families and stuff, don't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. Like families of four, get a few of them in there, fine, fine, fine. But the SmackDown thing is a disaster. They're gonna make it look like any other faceless basketball arena in the company that's bloody MSG. And I know what you're thinking. Well, you think, well, if they just like the right areas, then it won't look empty. But you, it, that's the opposite. That's hiding the negatives. And I get that you yeah. want to do that. But effectively, if you're in Madison Square Garden, sure the original plan for that is sell it all out and then show everyone we've sold out yeah. Madison Square Garden. And you don't want to like have to like unlight or darken areas because it's MSG, it's beautiful, it's a lovely building. And yet, here we are, WWE can't sell tickets. No, and um, it's worrying because they'll then potentially blame this on current talent rather yeah. than the fact that, you know, they've just ruined the town in recent yeah, memory for them. Yeah, haven't they? Put a bullet to it. Anyway, let's move on to some mm -hmm. new trademarks filed by WWE. Not a whole lot to analyze here, not gonna lie. Don't know if we'll be able to stretch this beyond five seconds, but here <laughs> we go. Uh, WWE have recently filed trademarks for Yowie Wowie. Do it properly. I've got a sore throat, man. <laughs> Yowie Wowie! There we go. Firefly Funhouse, Legit Boss, mm. and Monster Among Men. Cool, yeah, I mean, those are all things that exist on WWE TV, and now you can't use them, the internet. Only they can. So, yeah. yeah. So anyone who wanted to use Monster Among Men, that's you told. I like that. I like the... I'm glad that they've done this. I mean, the Firefly Funhouse stuff, they, they genuinely probably can't believe what they've got on their hands. The fact that those those little, what they call loot crates, or whatever you want to call them, sold out like that. Even though, even us in the office went, should we buy one? Oh, they've already sold out. Yeah, yeah, for the banner. Should we get yeah, one? Yeah, so, yeah, good stuff, and it's an exciting time for for those, well, it showcases their investment in those characters, I suppose, more than anything. Yeah, they're just protecting it, aren't they? They're protecting the time and effort they've put into building these people and their various catchphrases, <laughs> and... The polar opposite of what they did when they went, can we trademark Adam Cole? He's never used that anywhere else, has he? 
unbelievable. Uh, else very quickly though, before we before we wrap up here, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Bray Wyatt, of course. A load of speculation about what's going to happen with him going forward. The rumour is, or it seems to be being confirmed, I should say, that he's going to face the winner of Seth Rollins versus Braun Strowman at Hell in a Cell, which some people like, some people don't. Some people think that it's an exciting time, you have to strike while the iron's hot. Some people thinking The Fiend shouldn't be involved in any sort of title picture, either at all or not quite yet. But I'm not going to talk about that. I want to talk about tonight on Monday Night Raw because just a few hours ago, Bray Wyatt tweeted, quote, a rattlesnake skin's the same color as the leaves, she said. You gotta get them before they get you, quote, Sister Abigail. Ooh. Now, I know Bray is one for having a bit of fun with his Twitter followers, but the Texas rattlesnake's gonna be on Monday Night Raw tonight. Is he, that a hint? He certainly wants you to think he's going to attack Steve Austin, doesn't he? It's a, it's an interesting one. It's really, because if you think about it, it's Steve Austin. His like, gimmick was the baddest man alive. So, you know, you can get away with kind of downing and killing Mick Foley and Kurt Angle and whoever else he's battered. But Steve Austin, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know if Steve Austin can eat Sister Abigail and then just take it. Like, I feel like he's got to come back in the evening later on and kick his ass, which you can't do because the fiend's really protected. Yeah, he's just fanning around, isn't he? I, 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 I don't know. There's a bit, anyone else I'd have said, yeah, no, I don't get how over you are. You're not getting, getting one over on Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin clearly is invested back in the product right now. He presumably will want to put, put talent over as much as possible. I'm sure he's going to, you know, hopefully hype up and there's a reason why he's there for that Seth Rollins Braun Strowman segment. But there's a bit of me, there's a tiny part of me that thinks we could have the whole contract signed. Maybe the main event, probably is gonna be the main event, to be perfectly honest, despite the fact we've got, what, like four amazing matches yeah. tonight, uh, including, of course, the semi-finals for King of the Ring and a tag match between Becky, Charlotte, Sasha, and Bailey. I sense Stone Cold Steve Austin could be the main event, and I think that they could do the whole signing, you know, Seth and Braun, whether they brawl or whether they just leave the ring, and Stone Cold's like, well, thanks for coming, chuck me a beer, light, Dun, 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 like they do, go out. Fiend. Fiend. Yeah. I'd, I'd love it, but I don't know whether they're gonna pull the trigger on it. It would work at the end of the show and it would tie in with the title angle, so yeah, I've just can you kind of talked me into it, it's happening. It's happening. Stone Cold Steve Austin is gonna be attacked by the Fiend. Change the title of the news, that's what this is. Why, what is this? I, can't, I keep doing this. I it's, what it it's crazy town, but Follow the bu uh, right. <laughs> right. Come my lady, come, come my lady. You're my butterfly, sugar. sugar. Baby. Baby. Let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling for daily wrestling podcasts too. Uh, and you can send us Twitter questions for tomorrow morning's news at What Culture WWE. Watch you there. Follow both of us. You can follow him at Andy H. Murray. The H stands for Humpty Numpty sitting on a wall like some kind of clueless egg. You call Humpty Dumpty a numpty, man. Humpty Dumpty, mate. You can follow me at Adam Wilborn. You can follow us all at What Culture WWE, as I said. My thanks, Andy Murray. Thank you for watching. We will see you soon. Butterfly.